Hi, and welcome to the Tax Free Crypto Podcast. I'm so delighted that you're here, uh, a part of our podcast again. I hope that the content we've been putting out has been useful to you as we take current news and we kind of bring it down to something that's a little bit more edible than the complexity of what it sounds like. I'm here in the studio today with Eddie Wilson. Uh, He's been a friend of mine, but also somebody that uh, I kind of give to as a mentor to me, uh, full of lots of insights. And Eddie, I wanted to bring you in on the show today because I was recently uh, at a, a class where you were teaching in New York City, and you were talking about investments, something you're pretty good at. Uh, and a lot of people like to follow your advice, but you gave some pretty cool insights when when it comes to investments and when it comes to diversification. I, I think when most people hear diversification, they mean a whole lot of things in a whole bunch of different places. Mm-hmm. But you really had a, a great way of explaining about the quadrants. And of course, for me, cryptocurrency is one of those quadrants of giving or of investing rather that I think people should be a part of. So. I would never encourage somebody to take all of their investment money and put it into one vehicle, but at least a portion of it, in my mind, ought to be in cryptocurrency. So what what could you tell our audience about those quadrants and diversification? Sure, yeah. So uh, as I think about investing as a whole, I do believe in the model of of diversification. Um, And diversification as a whole does not necessarily mean like your, your financial advisor talks about and they're talking about, well, we gotta put this much in stocks and bonds and mutual funds. To me, it's about looking at asset classes specifically uh, in four different ways. And so as I teach a a lot about investing, it's primarily in these four quadrants where the top quadrant uh, is always high risk and high yield, all the way down to the lowest quadrant, which is low risk, low yield. And depending, just like your financial advisor might tell you, depending on where you are in life, you either need to speed up the output Mm -hmm. or you need to decrease the output and reduce risk. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I'm in my early 40s, and so in my, I'm 44, so that, I can still say early 40s, but um, <laughs> I'm 44, and it's like, so I'm still willing to take high risk. Mm-hmm. And then I also have enough investments that I've already taken care of my family, my kids, my grandkids. It's like, I've got that legacy wealth already built up. And so for me, it's like more about uh, maximizing my output because I actually want to take the output to go increase impact in the world. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I still put a primary um, emphasis on high risk, high yield. Mm. Um, When we get to kind of like medium risk and medium yield, as we kind of work through the quadrant, um, there are very few investments that I put into low risk, low yield. However, oftentimes I will offset anything that I feel like is extreme high with some low or medium. Um, Mm -hmm. Because in the end, what I don't want to do is is just delete the entire process yeah one thing that ray dalio talks about and he's one of the guys that i've followed for years is you know he's one of the top hedge fund leaders in the world it's like he always talked about if you lose uh it's not that you have to make 50 percent of your money however if your expected return is 10 percent, but you go to zero on a portion of your mm. investment you have to add that into the quadrant or i had to add that into the total equation of how much do i actually have to earn right And so what I'm constantly doing is a spreading risk. Now, the one thing that I do look at from a crypto standpoint is that while a lot of investments I'm making, whether it's in, I have a coffee company, right? And so a retail coffee investment is almost always gonna be high risk and high yield. I'm building that company to potentially exit in four to five years. So it's got the chance for high yield. However, um, when I look at that, when you put a retail, you know, think about COVID, right? Like you have a coffee company and COVID happens again, they shut down the country, like it becomes very, very high risk. Um, But that's because most of uh, what you're doing in high risk is speculative sales, right? So as I look at crypto, I actually think crypto spans the entire gamut of the four quadrants, right? right? You could technically be diversified in crypto. Mm Crypto has had a long enough track record that there are areas of crypto that have little to no volatility, right. you know, like there is a basis for some and there's enough trading platform, enough trading volume, enough t- uh, tenure, uh, tenure on the, on the actual like um, coin itself. You can look at it over time and there's very little risk, mm-hmm. right? Then there's super high risk, you know, new coins being launched and things like that, new th- things coming to the market, new products being put out. And there are things that are extreme high risk. And so I think in all four quadrants, you can put crypto. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that really what you're looking at is those speculative ones or the ones that are high risk, high yield, the ones that you're hoping will take off. Um, But your Bitcoins, your Ethereums, your, you know, those those baseline coins that have been around forever, 
um, you know, I put those more in a, a medium risk and medium yield. You know, you're not going to have huge fluctuation. You're, I think gone are the days, my opinion, gone are the days where Bitcoin jumps three or four or ten times its value. Hmm. You know, back six, seven years ago, you know, I felt like it did have that huge yeah. opportunity. And there are still some pundits out there that will tell you, oh, it's still going to go to 100,000. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't know that there's still a day in the future that that thing jumps $20,000 in a four month time period like mm. it has in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it, that's always speculative. You're always gonna find out one thing from the other, but there are indicators, uh, since you bring up Bitcoin, like the the spot Bitcoin ETF, mm -hmm. right, that all these companies have, have put sure. in for. ARK was not told no, mm -hmm. they were just told not yet. And then Greystone, just very recently, as of the re recording of this podcast, they just won. Right. Because technically they were the first to put in, mm -hmm. um, and then whether they get their other futures ETFs approved, and, and and again, a futures ETF has been on Bitcoin since what October of twenty one. Right. So uh, this is just going to be the first opportunity where the ETF will actually own the asset, right? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, and the the fact there's only ever going to be twenty one million Bitcoin right. ever, right? Then the next halving that happens April or May of next year. Sure. The idea or the speculation is it's scarcity, uh, and then uh, with 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 the institutional money kind of coming in, mm -hmm. I would just want to encourage as you talk about your your quadrants mm -hmm. that our listeners um, really, if they have a tax free vehicle with which they could make that investment within the quadrant, because yeah. let's let's face it, Bitcoin's a commodity. Right. E even the CTFC says that, mm -hmm. and, and the SEC as well. So you you are correct. There are certain meme coins out there that have their right. uh, their poker money, mm -hmm. if you will, right? Yeah. Money you're willing to sort of gamble it on, which, by the way, is a strategy. Sure. Right. Then you have your uh, Ethereum's, which uh, uh, you know, former President Trump. Uh, it came out from him recently that he owns two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth, and mm -hmm. uh, the CEO of OnlyFans just bought a whole bunch of that up. Sure. Uh, and then the layer two technology, mm -hmm. you know, this is what's amazing about it. So, you know, for those of you who are, are truly considering where to put your, your assets at, these things have utility. Uh, Solana Pay, we talked about in a recent podcast where, hey, you know, that has an actual utility. I mean, think about it, Eddie, if, if Amazon, who did $544 billion, I think, last mm -hmm. year, you imagine that what they paid to Visa and MasterCard. Sure. Yeah, had crazy. to be in the seven yeah. billion plus dollars, but with Solana Pay, it's the point zero zero two. No matter if you spend ten dollars or a hundred or a thousand, right? Same rate. Yeah. Same rate. And I'm a huge fan of Solana Pay. I, like I, I have been following Solana for a while now, and I think even before we got on the show, I said this is yeah. one of my this is one of my sleepers. I it's think this point, is yeah. I think this is it. Um, and I think that you know whether or not you're going into any asset class, um, there's a there's another piece that's missing, right? And so. With any asset class as you invest, it doesn't really matter how diversified you are, you also have to understand the exit strategy, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so, you know, mm -hmm. for an investment, I get into multifamily. I have around 4,000 doors, right? Like I'm heavy, heavy invested in multifamily, but I'm not invested in multifamily because it has the greatest yield. Typically it's medium yield and medium risk, mm -hmm. right? The reason I get into multifamily is because I create a ton of active income that I have to offset with depreciating assets. Mm -hmm. I buy, a million dollars worth of um, apartment complex, you know, a, a put an investment of a million dollars into an apartment complex, and I'm typically getting somewhere between 75 and 100% of depreciation on that, and so that means I'm turning around and writing off a million dollars worth of active income. Oh, right. So I'm looking at that as an arbitrage. So one great thing about the platform tax-free crypto is the predetermined exit doesn't hurt you on your aggregated yield. Right. Right. So like, a lot of real estate investors out there. They're like, oh, this asset made me 40%. And it's like, oh, and then I got a capital gains tax on it and I paid 39.6%. It's like, what is your actual <laughs> net yield, right? Like, and that's what people have to figure out. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not just about what it yields in the upturn. It also has to, you have to understand what it yields to you in the exit, right? You know, and that's what I do love about the platform is that you don't have to worry about that exit, you know, because it's inside of a tax-free <laughs> account, mm -hmm. right? So you can, you can play for these big up upswings in the market. Yeah, you know, I, it'd be great if, if Bitcoin doubled or something yeah. crazy yeah, like yeah. that. You know, it's like, but the what is even greater is your exit path in a tax free account um, allows you to earn the full capability of that right. of that appreciation or that that win. You know, 
Yeah, a absolutely. I think a tax-free vehicle, um, you know, one thing I, I really like to tout or, or, or teach people about is, you know, when it comes to your self-directed uh, investments, which are important, it's, it's a strategy. I think a lot of people look at their their investments as an mm -hmm. either or, right. don't they? Like, like I either do this or I do that. Mm -hmm. They they don't look at things as like a both and. Right. Like, yeah. why not have a, a, a path like like me when I bought XRP? Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't on any exchange. Sure. So I had to go to to Coinbase, buy Tether, then go to KuCoin, then mm -hmm. buy with Tether mm -hmm. the XRP. Then when Ripple won their case, right. the exchanges had it, but I already put it on my ledger. Right. 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 That's a strategy. Right. It's not the only way. Sure. So one of the ways with which you should have a strategy is a tax-free vehicle, mm -hmm. right? And, and so I think that's the importance of sort of those quadrants. Like you can have uh, one of my friends, matter of fact, I, I, I work close with him. His name's Ricky. He finally, uh, you know, just texted me over the weekend like, Eric, I finally have one full Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I said, like, dude, where at? He's like, well, I have some in tax-free crypto. I have some. So he's got it uh, like hedged in all these right. different exchanges. Right. But he finally owns one full Bitcoin, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so I think people need to add to their strategies, just like in real estate. You mentioned multifamily. Well, there's also fix and flip. There's also rentals. There's also tax liens and tax fees, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a strategy within the same yeah. niche. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, it's important, right? And I look at tax free, the tax free world, and really, you know, Andrew Cordell is the one who turned me on to the, the tax free world. Like mm -hmm. I, I was so heavily invested in all these other vehicles, but was ma massively paying tax. You know, and a lot of my companies that I exited paid huge tax on. Um, and in this tax free world, it's like what I find is, is the more I've gotten involved in it, the more I have these remnant dollars. You know, and so mm -hmm. these remnant dollars are. Yeah, I may have a hundred thousand or two hundred fifty thousand dollars in a self-directed account that I'm doing a real estate deal in, but the real estate deal doesn't cost me two fifty. The real estate deal costs me two hundred and twenty-six thousand three hundred eighty. Right. Yeah, it's like there's a very specific <laughs> amount. All of a sudden, I got six thousand dollars sitting there. What do I do with six thousand right. dollars? So then, what most people are doing inside of these self-directed areas, they're just letting it sit. Mm -hmm. right? like, there's no reason to let it sit, right? Mm -hmm. When you take a vehicle like tax-free crypto, I can take you know like I have in my own tax-free crypto right. account now. I've taken that small percentage, whatever that remnant dollar is, and you just put it in there, right? Yep. Because now at least it's working somewhere. Yep. I can still exchange it back. I can remove it if I find a deal I want to get in differently. Mm -hmm. I can move that money around, but yeah. it becomes a vehicle that allows me always the potential for yield. Yeah, one of the strategies I'm working on in my personal family right now is in the self-directed world. I, I, I went to a uh, self-directed custodian, mm -hmm. and uh, which is the same custodian as our uh, tax for crypto, which is equity trust. And I opened up a regular Roth IRA, rolled over from another financial uh, institution, and then I put X amount of funds in my tax-free crypto account. But here's what's cool, Eddie, that I really like about it. Whatever gains that I had in there, I sold those gains off, kept my zero, the initial mm -hmm. investment, and put them back in my other account. Sure. And I made deals right. at, a, at a mastermind, one of the masterminds that you were a part of, and I was able to make some investments because sure. I'm leveraging this and I'm ping-ponging my own money with myself. Right. And that's the thing that I like. It's, it's almost like when the, when the uh, uh, crypto market is positive, like it has been today, it mm -hmm. went up enormously with Greystone winning the, mm -hmm. um, their, sure. their, their lawsuit. Uh, and I just looked at my gains today. I'm like, I think I can make another investment as soon mm -hmm. as I put it over there. So yeah. that's what I love about the self-directed world. And that's kind of why I wanted you on here just to talk about the quadrants as people are worried about risk because uh, it is volatile in this market. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but before we close, if you could just kind of give uh, a piece of advice to our listeners, whether it's about – uh, uh, making investments or entrepreneurship or just something you want to leave with them. Sure. I, I was on a call with you last night and you were talking about some pretty good things uh, that your father had said and I don't want to get into that too much <laughs> but uh, whatever you feel like to share and then if you want to let people know where they can find you, how they can contact you, sure. if that's something you're available to do. Yeah, I, you know, I was talking last night about how obsessed I am with this concept and I've taken it so much from Malcolm Gladwell and his you know, book Tipping Point is that most people want to find success without putting in the time. Mm -hmm. And so for me, what I've been asked oftentimes when I get on a podcast or whatever, they all, it's like, how, did, how have you had this much success you know, mm -hmm. in, in this part of your life? And the answer is, is that I believe in this model, you put 10,000 hours in. If you wanna be successful, you wanna be a professional, you put 10,000 hours right. in. Like for an average working person, that's seven years worth of hard work, right? Mm -hmm. That's 40 hours a week, you know, seven years, you get your 10,000 hours in. 
The reality of it is, is when I was in my 20s, I decided that there was very little that mattered outside of success. And so I, whatever I was going after, I'd find a way to put my 10,000 hours in. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't sit there and watch Netflix for four <laughs> or five hours in the evening. I would read, right. I'd study, I'd practice, you know? And so um, I've spent so much of my life putting 10,000 hours into things. Investing is one of those things. Yeah. When I sit down and I underwrite a deal, the reason I underwrite deals well is because I put 10,000 hours mm -hmm. in. And I think that that's really, really important is that you either have to be willing to put the time in to become a professional or you have to be willing to let somebody else be the professional for mm -hmm. you and put your trust in them. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, it's like, that's where I'm at. There are things that I put my 10,000 hours in and I and it's made a massive success for me in my life. Yeah. And there are other areas that I'm not gonna put 10,000 hours in. So I better find somebody who has so I can place trust in them right. and their process. And to me, for everybody out there striving for success, that's where success is. There's no shortcuts, mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no quick corners. Um, young people come into my office all the time and ask, you know, it's like some of the younger staff members, how do I get to this place? Or where do I get to here? How do I get advancement? I had an intern that was just with us for the summer. And my answer to him was put 10,000 hours in, you yeah. know, like you're here. This is the first step in the journey, right? Like there is no quick shortcut to success. However, if you'll maximize your time, mm -hmm. you can get there twice as fast as anyone else, right? Like mm -hmm. I came from a family who invested hard workers, all of that. Um, but you ask my dad and he'll tell you, Eddie put the time in, yeah. you know, like he didn't give me anything, gave me zero, right? right? Like, but I was willing to put the time in. Right. And so what my dad was able to amass in 60 or 70 years, I did it in 30, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, because you shortcut, it's not a shortcut to success, it's a shortcut by putting the time in, you right. know? And so it's such a huge part uh, of who I am, it's who my family is, and it's who I want the people that surround me to be. Yeah, boy, I love that. I was talking uh, with Tim Story. Uh, I met him at, at one of the Aspire Tour events mm -hmm. that, that you guys host. And um, uh, I had him out recently on the podcast, and this is what he's talking about. He's given an illustration about how when he was a child, there was a, the, the low diving board, the, the middle, and then the high dive. Mm -hmm. And as he approached that, the low diving board, he was too afraid to jump. And that was sort of his catalyst to say, what are we so afraid of? Mm -hmm. When are we going to take the leap? Because so many people want to be like, I want to go to the high dive. Mm -hmm. And they're not willing to put in the work. It's, it's the whole crawl, walk, run situation. Mm -hmm. But so many kids, yeah. kids, younger people, they want grandpa's retirement. Right. And they just got in the workforce. Yeah, exactly. Put in the money. It's, it's that concept of muscle memory, right? Like mm -hmm. the good golfer doesn't step out and naturally <laughs> have it. it. It's a good, the good golfer swings that club. No, Tiger Woods did, right? Yeah, no, he didn't. No, he, he was five four. years old. Yeah, yeah four years yeah, old. Yeah, he started at four. And his dad started making him, he started creating muscle memory in him, exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, shooting a three-point shot it's muscle memory you know it's like all these kids that step behind the line and think oh I'm gonna drain a shot like Steph Curry six yeah. feet behind the line and they go out into a game in a pressure situation and then they fail right yeah. but the kid that goes out in the driveway and shoots 600 shots a night it's just it's just part of the process 10, right 10,000 hours. 10, hours and so you know it is important that we take that low dive medium dive high yeah. dive and perfect it yeah well, uh, when it comes to your social medias, where can people find you? Yeah, you can. I'm active. I manage my own, and so you can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, all Eddie Wilson all official. Things. Eddie Wilson official. And then I believe uh, the next uh, big stage you're speaking at is the Aspire Tour in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I've got an investing conference coming up before that out in Las Vegas. Um, I speak a lot at uh, lending conferences. Okay. And then we've got Chicago coming up, Aspire. Then right after that, uh, I think we go to. Um, San Diego, then on to Houston, then on to Atlanta for the end of the year. Cycle continues. So. so if you're interested in hearing more about uh, Eddie Wilson, you can get on his socials there on Instagram, LinkedIn, and all of those. Uh, and if you're in the Chicago area at the end of September, September 28th, you can definitely see him there. Go to theaspiretour.com. Uh, you can kind of get your tickets there. Eddie, I want to thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you. And thank you all for tu tuning in.